apocalyptic proportions. Wildfires, extreme flooding, hurricane force winds, and drought. The combination of those four extreme weather events can be explosive. If this dam gives, if it breaks, all hell could break loose, literally. In the heart of Pasadena, California, Devil's Gate Dam controls the water flow of the Arroyo Seco River Basin. But according to legend, there's a mystique surrounding this area that goes beyond the dam's demonic name and unique rock formation. Many believe a mad scientist may have harnessed its dark energy and opened a portal to hell. Oh, there's many legends associated with Devil's Gate Dam. Its name alone, Devil's Gate, leads people to believe that it is one of the gates to hell. I heard it's supposed to be haunted. There's this guy who was really into the occult, a lot of black magic stuff. I've also heard people talking about disappearances of children. It's probably just a coincidence, but I guess the devil is all about deceiving, so you never know. Crime writer and documentarian Weston DeWalt also believes something strange is at work in the area surrounding the Devil's Gate Dam, and he has the research to back it up. Within the range of Devil's Gate, there are countless cases dating back to the 1800s of people being mysteriously murdered, of people's bodies being found, of people disappearing. Is there something about this place that draws this strange atmosphere where things happen with no discernible explanation. One of the cases associated with the Devil's Gate Dam was that of Bruce Kremen in 1960. Bruce was a six-year-old boy who lived in an L.A. suburban community. It was his first day at a day camp just uh, to the north and the west of Devil's Gate Dam. Now we're going to head this way. Does that sound fun? Bruce had not wanted to go to camp, and the counselor is the one to whom uh, Bruce was assigned. So he decided to take the kids on a, a kind of a short orientation walk. I'm really tired. Can I please go back? Bruce was protesting. And the counselor could see the main center of the camp and said, fine, you go back and we'll be back in just a few minutes. He turned back on the trail. He walked back toward the center of the camp. I mean, we're talking a matter of 20, 30 yards, most. Counselor returned to the camp. Hey, Bruce, how you feeling? Bruce wasn't there. Yo, Bruce! He vanished. Bruce! Bruce! The search for Bruce Kremit was very intense. Helicopters, people on foot, people on horseback. The search for Bruce Kremit turned up absolutely nothing. No item of, of clothing. Nobody saw him getting into a car. Nobody saw him walk away. Nobody saw him talking to a stranger. Bruce was uh, never found. His body's never been found. And Bruce Kremen's fate is still a mystery today. Bruce Kremen's disappearance did feed into a suspicion to the mythology. There's something about this area 
It was kind of the Bermuda Triangle of, of Southern California. Strange things happen in this area for which we have no explanation. Why is that? These strange occurrences seem to be ingrained in the environment itself here. Even the river leading to the dam's name, Arroyo Seco, seems to be a contradiction. The Arroyo Seco is Spanish for dry riverbed, but the Indians called it land of flowing waters, fruitful valley. As managing director of the Arroyo Seco Foundation, Tim Brick has carefully monitored the Arroyo Seco's changing water flow. Rivers in the West are hard for a lot of people to understand because they're not this big, massive, constant flow. In the West, rivers are often variable. They vary by rainfall, and so seasonal rivers can only have water in them six or eight or ten months a year. Devil's Gate Dam and the Arroyo Seco are at the mercy of California's weather. No rain, the river dries. Heavy rain can mean intense flooding. And sometimes, conditions at the base of Devil's Gate Dam can change in the blink of an eye. It's quite a dramatic thing when flooding moves through and creates this massive force of water in the Arroyo Seco. One minute you're fine, and the next minute there's a big storm washing through the area. It's this force of Mother Nature that always clouded the area with an ominous sense of danger. Devil's Gate author F.J. Lennon believes it even dates back to the American Indians. The legend of Devil's Gate started with the Hahamunga tribe, which inhabited the area around Devil's Gate Dam. Devil's Gate gave great concern to the Native Americans that lived there because of the fury of the water that flowed through there. And they treated it almost as a forbidden zone. There is a powerful force of nature at work on that very spot. It's very common in American Indian culture to have land revered for special reasons. Devil's Gate was once held as a sacred area to the Hahamonga people because that is where the water flowed. For the Hahamonga people, there's a great spiritual connection at the Arroyo Seco. Water is our mother. It is our life. While the roots of the Devil's Gate legend may be grounded in Mother Nature, it is one scientist's work in the 1940s that believers say transformed this area forever. There's a theory that Parsons opened a portal at that spot through the blending of technology and science and occultism. And the apocalyptic weather extremes in the Arroyo Seco only fuel the fire that a dark dimension exists at Devil's Gate Dam. Where you have the threat of fire, the threat of flood, and also the threat of drought. You just don't know what's coming. With an average of 290 sun-soaked days per year, scenic Pasadena, California, might be best known for its natural beauty, idyllic hiking terrain, and proximity to some of Mother Nature's finest work. But there's a dark legend lurking just beneath its fabulous facade. Yeah, I've heard of Devil's Gate Dam. It's a really cool looking structure. And there's a lot of trees and bushes and shadows. So uh, you don't really want to be there too late because there's not a lot of lights or people around. It's not somewhere you want to be uh, when the sun goes down. According to legend, there's always been a strange power that controls this area surrounding Devil's Gate Dam. It always had this ominous presence of danger that existed there. And people believed Devil's Gate seemed to draw a lot of power, whether it's natural or whether it's something we can't really explain, it's, it's magnetic. There's something there that has a sense of power about it. And when European settlers move into the area, they too notice something strange around the Arroyo Seco River Basin. When Pasadena began to emerge as a city, people began to notice the demonic rock formations which stood at the base of the river. These rock formations were formidable and scary and they look like a devil's profile, complete with horns. These pioneers named the area Devil's Gate and settle along the banks of the Arroyo Seco and thrive on its rich resources. But these resources come with a price. 
meteorologist and Southern California native Crystal Egger knows the extent that heavy rains can affect the region. I always hear people say it never rains in Southern California. The problem is when it does rain, it pours. And in the 1800s, before there was a dam protecting the area, when it pours, it floods. The Arroyo Seco is located at the base of the San Gabriel Mountains. So the water that comes down during a rain event doesn't have anywhere to go but downhill. It can fill up with torrential floods, and that in turn causes a lot of problems for the Pasadena area. Which is what it does over and over again, just as Pasadena's population begins to grow. Well, the flood of 1862, it rained heavily for four weeks, and we ended up with about 30 inches of rainfall across the Pasadena area. They were inundated with floodwaters. But it's the flood of 1914 that finally prompts action. In 1914, this area of the Arroyo Seco was inundated with rain. Torrential flooding came through that area, causing millions of dollars worth of damage. 43 people lost their lives. Devil's Gate Dam is constructed right next to the demonic rock formation, leaving the canyon surrounding it an open space. But it isn't until the 1940s when one man's endeavors in both rocket science and the supernatural propel the legend of Devil's Gate Dam into a whole new dark dimension. Jack Parsons grew up in Pasadena reading science fiction stories. All he wanted to do as a young boy was go to the moon. As the writer of the definitive book on Jack Parsons, George Pendle has extensively researched the rise and fall of this eccentric genius. At the time, rocketry was perceived not even as a science, so Parsons had to teach himself all about rockets, and he would just build these rockets in the Arroyo Seco. Parsons meets a group of like-minded friends and begins launching more complex rockets in the area surrounding Devil's Gate. They go to the Arroyo Seco to build the rockets because their rockets are getting louder and more dangerous. Good, all right. On numerous occasions, their rockets blow up in their faces and they get this nickname, the Suicide Squad. In a matter of months, Parsons and his Suicide Squad have a major scientific breakthrough. Guys, I'm ready. When Parsons was about 22 years old, they built their first rocket motor, which was basically the basis of a rocket ship. And this rocket motor soon gets the attention of the U.S. government. Suddenly, people started to see military applications. And these were rockets which the military wanted to be strapped under planes, which would give them super performance. So he started working for the military. And by 1943, the Suicide Squad had transformed into the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. But it's Jack Parsons' other passion that has people running scared today. By day, he built rockets. By night, he was the head of an occult society. Rocketry and magic were really just the same kind of thing to him. Rocketry suggested you could escape the Earth and fly to the moon and to galaxies far beyond. And magic suggested that you could go into other dimensions, other worlds with uh, strange beings and, and meet them too. And there's one spot where both his passions seem to come together. I think he was drawn to Devil's Gate because he sensed something there that was intriguing to him. I think he sensed some power there. While Jack Parsons is taking off as a rocket scientist, his obsession with the occult will change the history of Devil's Gate Dam forever. Did Jack Parsons create a portal to another dimension? I can't say for certain, but I can certainly say that the world changed in dramatic ways after he did what he did. In Pasadena's Arroyo Seco River Basin, that legend says is the center of an all-powerful and evil force. Some say it may even be a portal to hell created by a mad scientist. I'm a big fan of sci-fi, and I'm an even bigger fan of Jack Parsons. I would say he's an evil genius. I've heard that he blew a hole through the gate to another dimension, called the portal to hell by a lot of people. In 1936, the self-taught eccentric genius Jack Parsons, along with his team of fellow rocketeers, successfully build the world's first rocket engine in the vicinity of Devil's Gate. 
but it is the rumors of Parsons' obsession with the dark arts that propel the legend of Devil's Gate Dam. Jack Parsons saw rocketry and magic as two sides of the same coin. At one point he said, if I can be a genius in the field of rocketry, if I can found the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, why can't I do the same for magic? So he began recruiting people to come back to his house that backed onto the Arroyo Seco. And there they would have these occult rituals. So the Arroyo Seco is, is kind of like the, the bloodline between his professional life and his personal life. And for a time, Parsons is able to lead his double life. The magic that Parsons was involved in was magic defined as changing the world by kind of forcing it by reciting these rituals. Parsons believed that when he did a ritual, there was a noticeable change in the environment. He believed he could make the storm winds blow. Parsons was well attuned to the weather and he often used his magic to try and change the weather. But as Parsons becomes more involved with the occult, it isn't long before the military learns of his extracurricular activities and puts an end to his career in the field of rocketry. As rocketry became less a part of his life, so the occult became all-encompassing. Parsons began to really devote himself to his most spectacular magical working, which was known as the Babylon working. Parsons believes the goddess Babylon is a prophet from another dimension, and it is his calling in life to bring her to earth through his ritualistic magic. The purpose of the ritual was to summon this elemental force, this goddess, or some might call demon, Babylon. This is the Babylon from the book of Revelation the great harlot, the great destroyer. If successful, Babylon will be born into this world and lead a new generation of occultists. He really believed that through this magic, he could make her appear in the world and bring about a whole new age. After months of nonstop ritual magic, Parsons believes he has succeeded. Parsons believed this was the greatest thing he had done in his life. Forget rocketry, forget all the advances he had made there. The Babylon working would be what he was remembered for. And he's right. It's his quest to bring Babylon to Earth that many believe punched a hole to a dark dimension, perhaps even creating a portal to hell at Devil's Gate. But before Jack Parsons has a chance to truly know the extent of his work, he dies in a freak explosion. June 17, 1952, Parsons is in his private lab doing work, and an explosion occurred. Parsons' arm was blown off, and half of his face was blown away. There's some speculation on what happened, what was he up to in that lab. No one's quite sure to this day what it was. Jack Parsons' life and his untimely death at the age of 37, they kind of allowed a lot of myths to grow in that area around the Devil's Gate Dam. He had performed his rocket tests just to the north of it, and now he had brought beings into the world. His character became an intrinsic part of that area's kind of myth. Parsons' work with Babylon working introduces the idea of a portal to hell. You couple that with the rock formation of Devil's Gate, and there's a perfect sort of synergy and synthesis between this kind of work we know Parsons was engaged in with a legend of a demonic face, and the two go hand in hand. So the face then becomes the portal to hell. People believe that he punched a hole through reality to something. The world changed in dramatic ways after he did what he did. Strange occurrences began to happen, unlike ever seen before. In 1956, two children were riding their bikes at the dam, and they disappeared. 13-year-old boy, 11-year-old girl, disappeared without a trace. Over the next several years, residents grow fearful of the area between droughts and floods and missing children. Now, nearly half a century later, Devil's Gate still evokes apprehension to some, while it seems to draw others in, like Detroit native James Darnell. I heard about Devil's Gate um, through a friend. He told me it was a great place to visit. He didn't tell me the history and the, the background of the place. And it is what James sees at Devil's Gate Dam that will haunt him for the rest of his life. My heart just completely dropped. I got chills and I began to sweat. I had never experienced that before.
Pasadena, California, legend has it that there's a dark energy embedded deep within the rocks near Devil's Gate, possibly even a portal to hell created by an eccentric genius. In periods of biblical type droughts and floods in the area only add to its demonic lore. The most dangerous weather we could possibly see in this area would be on two different sides of the spectrum. You're either looking at a dry and hot period, which we're in now with our drought, or you're looking at torrential rains that set up over the San Gabriel Mountains and lead to massive flooding inundating some of these areas around Pasadena. But in between these two weather extremes are days filled with sunshine and near perfect temperatures. Much like the devil, the danger lurking in the area can be deceiving. The Arroyo Seco is really a very beautiful place. Always nice and sunny, great weather, uh, beautiful mountains, lots of places to hike. Really a great place to live. I think everybody notices that it's beautiful, especially if you like to hike. There's so much to do here, it's amazing. But I do recall hearing about some kids going missing maybe in the 50s and perhaps they haunt the area. I'm not a big believer in that, but you know, maybe, who knows. Still, amongst the beauty, some believe there lies a mysterious force, a dark energy that causes strange things to happen with no explanation. And some of that mystery hits too close to home for Detroit native James Darnell on a hike with his girlfriend at Devil's Gate Dam. The plan for that day was just to go hiking, relax, and just have a good time. My girlfriend had not heard of Devil's Dam. I think the name really sparked our interest. Devil's Dam, it sounded like something out of a scary movie. That day was very sunny, no wind, and it was about 75 to 80 degrees. So, you know, it was a perfect day to go hiking. It didn't take us that long to get from the park to Devil's Gate. Me and my girlfriend was walking by the gate, and she just stopped. And my hand kind of like tugged back. Her eyes got really big as if she saw something. I saw fear in her face. She was really scared. Baby, what's wrong? What's wrong? Did you just see that? She was like, um, did you just see that? And then she gripped my hand really tight. And I'm like, see what? Baby, baby, what's going on? What's going on? It was a little girl. She had black hair. And she had explained to me that she saw a little girl standing by the gate. <gasps> What are you? And I looked towards the direction that she said she saw it at, and I saw nothing. There's nothing there. Look, we just, we just gotta go. No. She really seemed frightened, like for real, because she really wanted to leave. Babe. Once we got back home, me and my friend decided to walk back to the dam. Ghost friend was, buddy? Oh, man. <laughs> I remember exactly where she saw the little girl. So I looked towards the direction of the gate, didn't see anything, turned around and scanned the whole area. I turned back towards the gate, and sure enough, I saw a little girl standing by the gate. Did you see this? I totally lost it. I freaked out. Right there. And my friend, he was just, where, where? Where do you see this little girl? And I pointed towards the gate. It's nothing. And he said he saw nothing. Dude, right there, look. Right there. Yeah, you see this? I don't see anything. I just panicked. She was right, man. She was right. I didn't believe her. I knew it had to be the same girl my girlfriend had described to me. Her eyes were literally like black saucers. I'm out of here. What? I was just scared as hell. And I got out of there as quick as I could. Dude, there's nothing. First thing I did when I got home was research the dam. And sure enough, I did find the history of the little girl who actually came up missing in the 50s. 
They described her from 10 to 13 years old, short hair, gown. So that was really freaky, and by then I knew it was real. The little girl that we saw was the exact girl that came up missing from Devil's Gate. We were not really the type to believe in ghosts, but take it from me, ghosts are real. I don't even really watch horror movies anymore because of that. As of today, I haven't been back to Devil's Gate. I don't plan on going back to Devil's Gate. Both James and his girlfriend believe that they saw the ghost of one of the victims of Devil's Gate's troubling history, a child who disappeared from the Devil's Gate region after Jack Parsons' work with the occult. The first child, the second child, the third child, the fourth child, as they just began to disappear one by one by one, things changed. There was a heightened sense of awareness that there was a danger lurking out there somewhere around Devil's Gate. Is someone or something hunting children at Devil's Gate Dam? I think the power of the legend around Devil's Gate is that it has so many clear, historical, provable pieces to the story. You've got Parsons and the occult. You've got dead children. You've got a rock that looks like a demonic face. And then we also have a series of droughts and flooding. You have these pieces that are really indisputable. So to bring all that together and then to add all the stories of personal experiences makes for a very powerful set of legends. There were any number of mysteries that existed around the Devil's Gate area. Evil abounds. It's around every corner. Is there something about this place? Is there something about the Devil's Gate area that invites this? It's a question that still lingers today. Are innocent victims lured to Devil's Gate because of a dark, powerful energy? Or are evil people drawn to the lore because of the dark world it represents? The concept of the devil itself is a very spooky and mysterious kind of concept. And so I think some people are attracted there um, either to look for evil and negative things or else sometimes to do evil or negative things. And, uh, you know, there have been enough instances of it to give people a basis for, for being afraid. And there's something else to be very afraid of at Devil's Gate. The current weather conditions have set in motion dire circumstances at the dam. Circumstances that threaten the entire area downstream. If we were to see a major flooding around Devil's Gate Dam, not only would we have incredible property damage, but a lot of people could lose their lives. And that is a scary thing here in Southern California. People are scared. They're afraid that hundreds of houses are going to be washing away down the Arroyo. Action needs to be taken very soon in order to improve the flood capacity of Devil's Gate Dam. From flooding to drought to wildfires, Southern California is at the mercy of Mother Nature. And Mother Nature, or perhaps the devil himself, is not playing nice. According to legend, eccentric genius Jack Parsons' obsession with the occult somehow managed to unlock a portal to a dark dimension, or perhaps even a portal to hell at Devil's Gate. And ever since, this area in Pasadena, California, has been the site of unexplainable phenomena. The legend of Devil's Gate Dam is far more than a scary rock that looks like the devil. I mean, this is a place where weather phenomena is extreme and where human beings disappear off the face of the earth. And I don't think you can look at it as just some urban legend, some tale passed on from the Native Americans to our culture today. Something is at work there. Did Jack Parsons create that? While stories of strange events at Devil's Gate fuel the legend, some also wonder if it's playing a hand in the region's dire weather conditions. Well, right now we're in an extreme drought, but they're saying that we're going to have two 100-year floods in less than a five-year period, and it's going to destroy Devil's Gate Dam. Every time it rains, people say, oh my gosh, it's going to be the end of Pasadena. 
Is this extreme weather amplified by the evil energy associated with Devil's Gate Dam? It's either feast or famine, drought or deluge in Southern California. The most dangerous weather in this area would be on two different sides of the spectrum. You're either looking at a dry and hot period or you're looking at torrential rains. And both are currently creating the conditions for a possible real-life hell on Earth. We are currently in a three-year drought. The longer we go without rainfall, the drier the ground is, increasing our risk for wildfires. And in light of the continuing drought conditions, many fear a repeat of the largest wildfire in the history of Los Angeles County, the 2009 Station Fire. The massive blaze raged for weeks, scorching roughly 250 square miles of Earth. And its aftermath also set up dangerous conditions at Devil's Gate Dam. Following a wildfire, everything that burned is not always removed from the hillside or the mountain and when it rains everything gathers quickly and heads downstream that is until it's stopped by a dam which is what is happening at devil's gate today just in the last five years since the 2009 station fire that dam has been choked with mud and debris on the back side of the gates there's so much sediment there that it is no longer as effective as it needs to be in controlling floodwaters it's this situation that is most frightening about this legendary spot floodwaters could overspill the dam and overpower the downstream communities is this another example of devil's gates dark energy at work there's a lot of concern. We will have heavy rain on top of drought parched land. And if we get that heavy rain, the soil is not going to be able to absorb it. That water has nowhere else to go except straight down into those neighborhoods. The mountains above Devil's Gate have some of the most intense rainstorms ever recorded on our planet. The rainfall is significantly higher and can be often as much as twice as high as it is in Pasadena. The San Gabriel Mountains are among the most erosive mountains in the country, and this really aggravates the flood threat. So we're faced with flash floods that, that might occur rapidly and uh, very erosive conditions in the mountains. And you put those two together, then you add on fire threat. It's a deadly combination. And the fear is that it won't take much to take down Pasadena's last line of defense against a major flood. Because the Arroyo Seco area is so vulnerable to flooding, we could have a half an inch of rain in less than an hour and easily see flooding any more than that. And you could have a torrent of water coming down through the Devil's Gate Dam full of rock, mud, and debris. We could easily see enough to spill over those floodgates and cause severe flooding in Pasadena and surrounding areas. It could be deadly. While the community works to remove the sediment in a sustainable way, the unpredictable weather makes the job that much more difficult. What people may not realize is that in one given year, we can have wildfires, extreme flooding, hurricane force, Santa Ana winds, and drought. And the combination of those four extreme weather events can be explosive here in Southern California. We can see severe damage and loss of life. We cannot predict mother nature, so we need to take steps to be protective about it. Action needs to be taken very soon in order to improve the flood capacity of Devil's Gate Dam. It has capacity for another massive storm, but people are scared. They're afraid that hundreds of houses are going to be washing away down the arroyo. Perhaps it's the legend itself that makes this fear of destruction all the more real for Pasadena residents. In this case, there are a series of environmental concerns, wildfires and flooding, that if not attended to, could cause something fairly apocalyptic. When you've got this happening right in the middle of a place that many people see as being at the least dark and scary, and at the most, a portal to hell, then all of a sudden, the fears get heightened. And the combination of both Mother Nature's wrath and the supernatural lure of Devil's Gate Dam is too much for Pasadena local Adam Nodler to resist. 
I was always interested in legends and paranormal, and I absolutely wanted to see Devil's Gate Dam. The name just comes out at you, Devil's Gate Dam. Adam gets much more than he bargains for at Devil's Gate, and he has the scars to prove it. I felt this burning, stinging feeling. I never thought that would ever happen to me. Sunshiny Pasadena, California, is home to the legend of Devil's Gate Dam, a place many believe is a portal to a dark dimension. From droughts to wildfires and floods, the area's weather extremes turn locals' California dreams into living nightmares. And reports of unexplained disappearances and unorthodox occult activity only add to the terrifying lore. Devil's Gate has a lot of history here. It goes back all the way to when the Indians were first here. It could be very deceptive as far as the weather goes. You have beautiful sunny days like today, but then things could change rapidly. There are legends that it was haunted, and there's some kind of connection between the Devil's Rock and some sort of uh, portal to, to hell. And Pasadena native Adam Nodler is about to learn firsthand that a trip to Devil's Gate can quickly become a hike from hell. On my way up, I didn't know what to expect. The not knowing is part of the excitement. There weren't many people on the dam. It was just me, and I didn't get a good feeling about it. The energy of the place is just Something's off about it. You can feel that there's a type of negativity there. I had this sick feeling like I was feeling nauseous. And all of a sudden, I felt this burning, stinging feeling on my thigh. My leg was killing me, and I looked down, and there were these three scratch marks staring right at me. On my right quadricep, they were very long, made a curving shape. I mean, when I saw it, I couldn't believe it. I didn't come in contact with anything. No bushes or no shrubs. The scratches definitely came out of nowhere. I just had this feeling to get out of here. It's time to leave. I never thought anything weird like that would ever happen to me. I do believe that I was attacked by a demonic entity at the Devil's Gate Dam. Adam's story is one of hundreds that have locals questioning their beliefs and wondering, what if? The fact that in this area so many children disappeared and the death of a child is particularly disturbing, um, not just because it's a life cut short, um, but because of the sort of vulnerability and innocence assumed around children. and so. Those kinds of deaths are very fertile ground for assumptions of ghosts or hauntings. Is there something about this place that draws these mysteries, that, that draws this strange atmosphere where things happen with no discernible explanation? Mystery, myth, what the hell is going on? That's a question that many are asking, and not just when it comes to the strange or unexplained, but for the weather as well. There's all sorts of extremes here. There's no way of telling what's going to fall from the sky each year in terms of rain. It's, it's just impossible. There's no such thing as normal. We Southern Californians have made our bargain with nature. We're ready to deal with flood, fire, earthquake, because we love Southern California and its great natural beauty and pleasant climate. As for Jack Parsons, he was a blessing and a curse to Pasadena. To begin with, he was just a rocket scientist, but he was involved in magical rituals. The deeper you delved into him, the more strange stuff came about. His death seemed to open a view onto all sorts of worlds which nobody had thought of before in both science and the occult. Did Jack Parsons unlock a dark dimension, or did he just inspire a new generation of others to try? Great destroyer, bring forth the heart. 
this, that is this rocket. People who know about Jack Parsons and participate in the occult will go there. There are signs of Satanism, of witchcraft, in and around the dam. It's a place that continues to draw dark energy and dark human beings. And I don't know which one's more dangerous in the end. Regardless, Parsons' work in rocketry played a significant role in the advancement of modern space travel. There's a famous picture of the Suicide Squad lazing around on the Arroyo Seco floor, and on Halloween, Caltech students recreate this, and they call it the Nativity Day, because it was the day that the JPL was born. So, although Parsons was squeezed out of the JPL, some of his former Suicide Squad colleagues uh, still remained. They named a crater on the dark side of the moon after Jack Parsons. And on Earth, his otherworldly magic will be forever tied to the legend and the dark lore of Devil's Gate. There's the phrase, curiosity killed the cat, and, and maybe that's apropos here. If people often go looking for things, they're more likely to find them. Maybe the concept of Devil's Gate attracts people that are looking for something evil or sinister. It's part of the lore and lore of the Arroyo Seco. And while the cause of the chilling activities and unexplained phenomena at Devil's Gate Dam may be rooted in Pasadena's colorful past, it's the weather extremes that has the community wondering what will become of its future.